All right. Welcome to the New African Thought video channel. This is going to be my first reaction to what I would consider some of the greater thinkers in black history. And we are going to try to build a new African thought process or a new African way of thinking. That's what I, that's the goal of this channel is to try to build this. And of course, I would have to start with who I consider my black Moses, the one who has given us all the tools that we need to build power, even from our state. And like I said, this is going to be a long project as far as this YouTube channel goes. It's going to be an extended project that is going to hopefully get other people to bring in some ideas of their own to add to this discussion. But I understand that there will never be a mass gathering of black people that agree on to do something positive for ourselves because it is just the way it is. I've listened to enough Amos Wilson to know that we have been programmed for self-destruction in this country. And now we are even getting to the point where we are at odds with Native Africans that are on the continent or have come to the continent, or I mean, have come from the continent. So it is what it is. But this video here, this clip of a much larger video, we're going to be doing a lot of reaction to clips from Amos Wilson in the next, I guess, coming up the rest of this year and into the new year um, until we kind of get our thoughts on wax about what we think our philosophy should be as new Africans. I will tell you that I have another video up about why I say new Africans. And it's just meaning people in America that have an ancestral history of being enslaved in this country, not in the Caribbean, not in South America, but in the United States. That is what the concept of new African means. So let's get started with the video and we'll talk about it. They're putting it right in your face. If black spending power, if black spending can make the difference between the success and failure of Georgia businesses, and we're talking about what? White folks businesses. That means black folk got what? Power. Now, I'm kind of starting off in the middle of this clip because I wanted to give you some context of what he was talking about in this video. And what he is talking about is he was doing a doing a brief history of a report from the 1990s, uh, from 90 to 95, about black spending power in Georgia. And this was a report that was aimed at majority owned businesses in order for, so they can get a report on not only how much black people spend in Georgia, but what they spend it on. So people can invest in the right businesses in order to capture that spending. Now, this is something of course that we can use um, as far as black people go, but there's some more concepts in this, this little snippet of his lecture that I want to get crystallized at the beginning and the start of what we're doing here on this channel. I want to get that crystallized so that we can get an idea of what I am pointing to and what I am not pointing to when I talk about new African and building a new African nation in America. Because power is about what? the ability to succeed or to bring about what? Failure. And when somebody else's success or failure depends on your own behavior, then you have what? Power. New York State, the largest black market in the world, the largest black market in the world and the largest black market in this country. How much money are we worth in New York State, black people? You know how much money we are worth? $61 billion. 
Now, this is interesting because right now, I think as of 2020, the New York state market for black spending power is $141 billion. Uh, and I'm not, I don't want you to get harp uh, stuck on the spending power. This is just conceptual. I already know about the myth and of spending power and if it's really power and how consumerism cannot be the basis for building a nation or a nation state. But I just wanted to get that in on, on the record that the consumer power, this was like in 96, I think 95, 96, when this video came out. So in the like 25, 26, 27 years, the spending power for black people in New York has doubled despite all the hardships, crack era, and all that kind of stuff that went on in New York, Giuliani's uh, reign in New York, the broken windows policy, and all this other kind of stuff that went on in New York for the last 25 years, the spending power has more than doubled either way. So that means this, but this also includes New York's high immigrant popula population. So we'll go from there. That is a lot of money. This represents well over 10% of the buying power in New York State alone. Sorry to be stopping it so quick, but I just wanted to get it. When we, if you are familiar with the Republic of New Africa and its concepts, you will understand that my first thing and the first thing that I want to concentrate on is the reverse migration. So when he says that New York is 10% of the buying power, black spending power in New York is 10%, where I want to get started with building some kind a, of structure or organization for black people, for New Africans all specifically, is in Mississippi. And in Mississippi, black spending power is over 25% of the total spending power of the state. And that is not including the states where we will concentrate our efforts in, where it's probably closer to 50 or even more than 50% of the buying power. I'm speaking of the, the, the area, the New York, Connecticut, tri-state area. And uh, what does that mean? Now, but don't look at that absolute figure. Look at what would happen if we reinvested that $60 billion. If we put that $60 billion in black businesses, in black trade, if we invested that $60 billion in gaining equity in the major American corporations, if we gain that, use that $60 billion to gain equity in African countries. You know, I was just reading a piece this week about the fact that black investment bankers, a couple of black investment bankers, are selling as much as $100 million of bonds for the, the African uh, Development Bank. Yes, another black investment banker is selling something like $500 million of securities for African businesses and infrastructural development. What does that mean, African people? That means that if we were knowledgeable of corporate finance, if we were knowledgeable of investment vehicles, we could literally finance the development of Africa. And by buying securities in the African Development Bank, by buying bonds, by buying other investment instruments in African corporations, even if they're owned by white folk, because once we buy the shares, we become the owners. And this is the key concept of this whole lecture or this snippet of this lecture, the knowledge of corporate finance. This is where we have to cre increase our knowledge as black people or as new Africans. We have to increase our knowledge of corporate finance. And the concept that he's talking about is buying shares. If you can remember back in the early 2000s, I think, uh, there was a real run of Asian businesses 
buying famous brands from European countries and American countries, famous luxury brands and things like that. They were buying these brands. They were owning them and they wouldn't change the name. They would just change the ownership. And this is what I have always said during my whole research and everything that we have had it wrong. We had it wrong in the nineties and I'm not talking about Dr. Amos Wilson. I'm talking about people of what we needed to do of where we needed to fight. We thought the fight was in the streets. We thought the fight was in the voting booth. We thought the fight was in politics. The fight is in corporate boardrooms. The United States is a capitalist entity. The rest of the world, the entire global system has agreed that capitalism is going to be the way things run. No matter what these countries say about their political ties like China and Russia and all these other countries, they all have agreed that capitalism is the way we are going to deal with each other. So the new African must become knowledgeable in corporate finance. The new African must become owners in major corporations. The new African must become the driving force in businesses, business investment, especially black businesses. So this is where the spending power, and this is why you do not have to get people to get on board in mass. You just have to change their consciousness to let them know or to help them get to investing. And the good thing about today is it's much easier to invest in corporations than it was back in Amos Wilson's time in the nineties. You have apps and everything else like this, and you can capture things like market share in businesses and things like that. We just have to become familiar with the process and collectively target companies together. In other words, then, by using black wealth, we can become the vehicle for financing African growth and development. And by, by using our own wealth and financing our own businesses, developing our own economic system, we would multiply our wealth, and we would not only be then worth $400 billion, we'd be worth uh, $800 billion or more, and we would go stronger. And the stronger we go, grow, the more others would depend upon how we spend in order to survive. And to that degree, we will gain power over them. And that is the whole purpose of this channel. And that is why the preeminent text that we will be using will be Dr. Amos Wilson's book, Blueprint for Black Power, because the whole purpose of this channel is to increase the power of the new African in America. Now, we are not trying to build a separate sovereign nation in America. That is craziness. That is silly talk. We are trying to make or create a group of people, new Africans, that are dependent upon themselves that are a driving force in economics in the regions in which they inhabit that can increase reverse migration back into the South, specifically Mississippi, but mostly in all of the black belt in the South to increase reverse migration by investing in businesses and having jobs and a better way of life for new Africans, people who adopt the new African lifestyle that we will create in the black belt. This is what the purpose is to increase our power in America. You have to think about it like um, the Mormons in Utah, um, Jewish people in Israel, 
you have the number one thing that we have to do is define borders. And that is going to be my next video. I'm going to define the initial borders where we are going to concentrate on. And as more and more people come to this channel and add their thoughts and ideas, those borders might change. But initially, we are going to have something on wax where we can concentrate on. And I'm going to give you the importance of why black men or new Africans must do what every other man has done on this globe. That is, look at the map, look at where you want to be, draw lines, define your area of influence, go to work of increasing your influence in that area, and then making others recognize your influence in that area. If tomorrow we decided as African people to build co-op supermarkets across this country, and we can do it, so that we can sell our people grocery and food at below wholesale prices, if we decided using our church organizations as a means for sponsoring these co-op uh, food markets across the country so that we can open them literally simultaneously and centered then the buying uh, power for all of those co-op centers in a way that then we would have billions of dollars to spend with the suppliers of food. We could then manipulate those producers in terms of the buying power that we have. And this is very key. And when you look at a map, and this is something that I've done over the years, I've kind of studied, and this is the initial thrust of what I've always studied, and that is how are you going to feed your people? It's something I got from John Henry Clark, Dr. John Henry Clark, and even from the Nation of Islam, studying them and studying the Mormons and their food bank thing. The initial thing that you have to do is be able to feed yourself. And when you look at what Amos Wilson is saying about starting a cooperative, that is one route. Another route is to just purchase a grocery store that is operating in your sphere of influence, either through investing in corporation, investing in, if you can't get the biggest one that's already operating in your area, you can get one of its competitors because the thing about it is if you have a population advantage in the area, like in Mississippi, in the area of Mississippi that we're talking about, where blacks are greater than 50% of the population, if you have a population advantage, a spending power advantage, then you do not need to be the biggest in the state. You do not need to be the biggest in the region. All you need to do is change the consciousness of your people to spend money with you before others, and then you will grow accordingly. We can begin then to place our people on their boards. We can begin then to have real and substantial power right. in America. We have it in our hands, but you got to think of it as nation. Right. It becomes interesting, by the way. And I'm going to stop this real quick because when he says placing people on the board, this is very key. This is the number one problem that the new African has in this country. And I think a lot of people, a lot of black people in America have a new African consciousness, but it's nothing that they can tap into on a daily basis. It's nothing that they can pour themselves into, pour their resources into pour their time into on a daily basis that will amplify their consciousness and reward their consciousness. So they are, you know, subject to just being black in America and going, doing for self or doing things selfishly because there is no collective to operate upon under or to help. And you can see this in a lot of things that black people do online, no matter how messed up of a situation we are, you always see black people 
operating in a collective in some sorts, even if, even though it's mostly for foolishness right now, that can be redirected very easily into a positive path. Now, I'm not saying you're going to get a majority, but you don't need a majority. You need 5%, maybe 5 or 10% of the people. There's 47 people in the United States. If you can get 5%, that's two and a half million people. That is a lot of conscious power directed at one endeavor. And it will be good. And getting on these corporate boardrooms is where you start to affect the conversations. You cannot affect the conversations at the ballot box. Sorry to say that. You cannot affect the conversation in the streets uh, on a daily basis because you cannot get people motivated and mobilized for street action continuously because people have to go to work. But what you can do is get people to vote with their dollars and have enough dollars in a collective where they can have a voice in the boardroom on a daily basis. So even if you do not own the largest grocer in your area, if you have one or two board members on their corporate board, then you can effectively make decisions for that grocery store or that grocery chain. And that's how America works. That's the beauty of America. That's the beauty of the new African in America. Instead of fighting what America is, the new African must embrace what America is and go forward and use the, the tools that are out there in America for the best of our ability. If you study this particular breakdown of black spending in Georgia, and I wish we would get these breakdowns across the country. You see, when you become a state and a nation, you develop statistics. You see, and that's where statistics come from. It is the means by which a state and a nation gathers information about itself so that it can use that information to reorganize itself and to set itself up in ways to advance its interests. And this point is also very important that Dr. Wilson is saying. We have to start. Now, target marketing news is a good one for uh, these things. And I'm going to do a little video on that later on in the process. But what we have to start doing is we have to start acting like adults or like a people, a like like Dr. Wilson would say is acting like a nation. And we have to be accountable for ourselves. Stop depending on the United States to be accountable for us, telling us how many of us there are in this United States, how much we are actually spending, how much do we make, what we are actually doing. We are depending on white organizations, white think tanks, and the United States government to give us this information. And we already know if they're giving us inf this information, the information has been filtered for their interests. We need to get the information and filter it out for our interests as new Africans. But that's on down the line right now. We have to work with what we have to work with because we unfortunately are at the beginning stages. So once you become a nation, you become sensitive to the fact that you need a lot of information so that you can use this information. Now, when I read about the percentage of black buying power in Georgia by counties, something becomes very surprising. You note, for instance, that black buying power is as high as 25 and 26 percent in many of these counties. For instance, in Liberty County, Georgia, black buying power there uh, is a is 22% of the total buying power. In, Mer uh, in Merck weather, 25%. Peach County, 25%. Uh, and you can just go on and on. In some of these counties, black buying power is as much as 45%, 35%. In other words, the black consumer has these counties by the balls.
And this is something that we as a people are not using, of course, but it is something that the new African has to use in the future because the one thing that we know that's coming is mass immigration. They are going to let so many Asian and Hispanic immigrants into this country. It's just a matter of time before they start flooding areas that are historically black areas. So the new African must look at the map, the map of the United States, define an area of operation that we are going to be in and exert our influence on that area in all phases but especially economically. We have to exert our influence on a certain area because that concentrates all that spending power and money, and it allows new Africans or people who are friendly towards new Africans that are outside of that defined area to be able to invest into that area, invest into that area, and benefit from us dominating that area. And they are able, if that buying power was to be coordinated and used, to have real impact and to transform the power relations of those societies and of those counties. They would be able, if they are buying half or 25% or 30% of what is being bought in those counties to establish their own businesses and enterprises there. And they would be able to defend those businesses and enterprises through the use of the boycott weapon. So what are we saying here then this evening, ladies and gentlemen? That African power is based on an African consciousness, based on an African-centered culture, based on an African-centered personality. And the degree to which our personalities and our culture are based on African values, based on African interests, based on African goals. To that degree, we empower ourselves as Africans, and to that degree, we escape the power of others over us. Thank you very much for your kindness. Whenever you hear Dr. Wilson say African, 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 you have to think of new African. That is who we are. We are not the same as the continental African, even though we are not separate and we should not be at odds with them, but we are just as different as the Ghanaian is from the Nigerian. The Nigerian is from the South African. The South African is from the Brazilian. The Brazilian is from the Jamaican. The Jamaican is from the Haitian. We are a different people. But unlike them, we do not have any defined borders. And that is what we are going to do in the next video. We are going to define our borders and define our initial area of influence that we are going to try to make. And hopefully I will get other people to join me in this journey. And we can do these things together. And right now it doesn't require you to do anything, but contribute your ideas, listen to the videos, point me to other ideas that you have, anything like this. So if you find this video on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. So, cause we're going to keep doing this. I know my heading says videos every week, but these videos will probably become more frequent than weekly as I get started. And as I find more information that I want to share and distribute to the people. Like I said, the motto is still free the land. And we are doing this in the spirit of Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. John Henry Clark, Malcolm X, and others who have died doing as much as they can to bring about the survival and the thriving of the new African in America. Peace.